From refried beans to chilies to stews, pinto beans are one of the most versatile bean out there, and today I'm showing you the best and cheapest way to make them. Never did I think I would devote a whole show to just pinto beans, but you spoke and we listened and this is what you wanted to know how to make, and I've got the best way to make them. You can of course soak these the night before, you can prepare these on the stove, but the easiest way and probably one of the best reasons to own one of these bad boys is in the Instant Pot. To start, you're gonna wanna rinse your beans in cold water and you're gonna wanna pick through them to make sure there are no little stones or rocks left in them. This method, of course, works with any dried beans, but today I'm showing you pinto beans and I'm going to then take that one step further to show you an absolutely delicious recipe that I could eat every day. Once you have them rinsed, you're gonna add them straight into the Instant Pot. You can adapt this to whatever beans you want, but all you need to know at this point is that for this one pound of beans, I'm going in with five cups of cold water. You could use another flavorful liquid if you want, but today it's just good old H2O for me. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of flavoring just with some sliced onion and a couple bay leaves. Next, we will cook these on high pressure for 30 minutes. You're gonna wanna factor in a little bit of time for the pressure to build inside the Instant Pot. And then once that happens, it'll start counting down. These beans will be so tender in just about half an hour. We're going to let it naturally release for about 10 to 15 minutes before releasing the pressure. Y'all, these look so good. I just love how they got so creamy in the Instant Pot. I'm gonna create a whole nother batch starting from scratch. It takes no time and it could not be any easier. Everything literally just gets dumped straight in. We've got our beans that we have rinsed and drained. And then to that, I'm adding some onion that I have chopped up and then a half a pound of bacon. To that, I'm adding two cans of diced tomatoes with green chilies, then just our good old H2O. However, if you wanted to, you could sub in some chicken stock or chicken broth and then we're just gonna flavor it up with a little chili powder, cumin, and garlic powder. We're gonna wait to the end to season it with some salt, and then I'll show you how I love to serve it up. It smells good already. Seal it up, and we're going high pressure again for just 30 minutes. Sure beats that three to four hour cook time. I've let it naturally release for about 10 to 15 minutes, and now we're gonna release the rest. Can you smell it? Can you at least smell it? Look how creamy these have gotten. We are going to now season with a little bit of salt because we haven't done that yet. And then these will get finished off with some cilantro. And I think in general, people just don't really know how to prepare dried beans or they just seem like a lot of work, but y'all, it could not be any easier. I love serving these up just like kind of like red beans and rice. Mm -mm -mm. Who knew that beans could make me this happy? Mm. That is so good. And then one of my favorite things ever is to eat them over a tostada, kind of like you would a taco without any meat. Pinto beans might be cheap eats, but I'm telling you this recipe here, they taste like a million bucks. If you have any tips and tricks for cooking beans, leave them in the comments below. And in the meantime, I hope you'll give this method for cooking dried beans a try. And when you do, don't forget to tag me. I'll see you next time. Beans, beans, good for your heart. You cannot do a bean episode without saying that.